Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I'm running for sheriff of Franklin County is because of these two things right here. This story broke back on October the 15th, of 2015. It's called the Strong Cities Network. What this is, and I'm not going to read it to you, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this. The Strong Cities Network is a federalization of all local police departments and sheriff's departments. And this is a direct pipeline into the United Nations. It's extremely dangerous and it's against our Constitution. If this takes off, you will no longer have a local sheriff's department or a local police department. And I want to give you just a little bit of history between a police department and a sheriff's department. The sheriff's department evolved from English common law. The sheriff was around in some cases even before a king was. So the sheriff is autonomous. People got together because of, 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 of rampant crime throughout the English, uh, the Great Britain. And this goes back to the year 700, I believe. I could be wrong on that. And so the people were tar tired of crime and everything, so they appointed what they called a sheriff. So the sheriff is autonomous from any other political body. And his decisions concerning his duties cannot be overridden by anybody, including the President of the United States. During the War of 1860s, when the federal government attacked the states because of their sovereignty, the sheriff was still a recognized authority within that county. Now the word posse comitatus literally means the power of the county. So the sheriff is an elected representative by the people. They are his boss. Not the president, not the governor, not the mayor or, or a board of police commissioners. It is you, the people. If you don't like what a sheriff is doing, you can have a recall election and put that person out of office. Other than that, there's not much you can do. If he's following the Constitution of Missouri and the United States Constitution, and he's obeying the laws of the land, you cannot remove him from office other than by an election. That's the only way to do it. A police department, on the other hand, is like when a, when a place incorporates from unincorporated. When you incorporate into a city, you're going to have a mayor, you're going to have aldermen, they in turn will appoint police commissioners. I mean a, a, a board of police commissioners who will appoint a chief of police, like in Washington. The mayor selects her police chief and then he is confirmed by the city alderman. Now if the federal government wants to, they can come in and remove all of that because it's an administrative agency. It's not constitutional. But you can't remove a sheriff's department because they're based on constitutional law, but a police department is an administrative agency of a political subdivision. That's what happened to St. Louis County. Now when you read this, what, I, what I've handed out to you, this broke in the Canadian press. It's the only place in the United States that print, I mean, this is the only print on this. Nowhere in the United States will you find what our government has now done to us. The Department of Justice has mandated the Strong Cities Network policy. They're going to take over every single police department in the United States. They're going to do it. They've already taken over six of them. You can read them in that handout if you so desire. But a couple of them are Baltimore, Denver, Atlanta, Georgia, New Orleans, and St. Louis County is now under direct federal control. They no longer have autonomy. They are federalized police. That is going to go nationwide. It's going to happen unless we the people under the Ninth and Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, that's this thing right here, say no. This election that we're about to have for the Franklin County Sheriff's Department, I can't even begin to tell you how important this is. Only the sheriff of the county can say no. You are not going to send in federal police into my county unless you come through me. They cannot do that under the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. Every FBI agent that comes into Franklin County must go to the sheriff's office and say, I'm in your county. If, he, if the sheriff don't want him, and if the sheriff is strong enough, he can say, you need to exit. Because he's considered, a, he, he's considered a foreign agent and has to register with that sheriff's department under the law. So it's going to take a very strong, strong sheriff to stop the federal overreach that we are now seeing across the country. 
If we lose control of the Sheriff's Department, ladies and gentlemen, we have no more freedom under the Ninth and Tenth and First Amendment. It's gone. The Fourth Amendment's gone. This this whole thing here called the U.S. Constitution, and by the way, this is each of you's birth certificate. This is your birth certificate that our ancestors gave it. It says, we the people. It does not mean illegal aliens. It does not mean refugees or international travelers to our country. They do not have constitutional rights. What they have is something called international rights. And what that is, you could travel through our country, but you have to obey our laws. Like if I go to Germany and I get in trouble, I don't have German citizenship rights. If I'm in the UK, I don't, I don't have their rights. If I'm in Canada, I don't have the same rights they do. I have what is called international rights. I have no rights there, none. So when you have an illegal alien coming into our country and they say a policeman violated their constitutional right, that's a lie, because they don't have none. This, we the people, when they adopted that, they meant the colonists at that time. And we have long forgotten that. If this tumbles, we will have no more freedom. And that's what's at stake in this election right now, is who is going to be a strong enough sheriff in this county to say no to federalism overreach. It's, it's my opinion, it's my opinion with the way things that are going in our country today, there's going to be an emphasis upon some type of gun registration and then later will come gun confiscation. It will happen. First come registration, then come confiscation. Uh, the only problem is for this to work, for the Strong Cities Network to work, there, something has to happen. It's called chaos because this comes under the title of the Genocide Treaty that was passed by the Bush administration. The Bush administration enacted a treaty called the Right to Intervene. That means the United Nations can come into a country and take over all law enforcement if they feel that an ethnic minority group is being oppressed by the majority. That's where this comes in at. So they cannot enact this. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you unless there is chaos and anarchy. And out of an anarchy comes what? Comes order. You remember the story of the old phoenix? One has to die for another one to be born. So the only way the Strong Cities Network can come out, ladies and gentlemen, is for there to be some kind <coughs> of chaos in America. There has to be disorder. There has to be turmoil for the American people to accept this. And ladies and gentlemen, they're going to accept this. The American people will trade their freedom for security. And I hate to say that, but I believe that they will. So that's why we have to have a very strong person in each of our sheriff's departments all across the county to say no to this. When people's tempers are running hot, when they're afraid and they're making unwise decisions, somebody has to stand there that's been under fire that can say, let's slow down and talk about this. I'm the only one in this race right now in Franklin County that, is a, that has been the combat. I'm the only one that has been trained in leadership. And a manager is not a leader. A manager, you will hear people talk, all they do is manage resources. They're only managing and they want to maintain what they got, keep what they got. But a leader is also a manager, but he has a vision. He's looking down the road and he's saying, these are the changes that we need to make to protect our freedoms or we're going to lose it. The scripture says if a nation doesn't have a vision, they're, they're, that they're going nowhere. So this here is a very serious thing. Now, if you don't listen to anything I tell you after this, please research the Strong Cities Network. It is a fact. It is happening. It is here. And it's going to happen. People are going to trade security for freedom, and you're not going to have nothing in the end. Nothing at all. And I'm, and I'm terribly afraid about that. I have to ask myself, what am I going to leave this little one here? Th ladies and gentlemen, this is what you do today is not for you. It's too late. It's too late. But what about her? Do you want Do you want a camera in, in her house where the government's monitoring what she does? Do you want listening devices put into her home where they're listening to what she says? And in this book right here, this is Missouri's criminal code book that is handed out to all policemen. And I'm going to just paraphrase this. It talks about terrorism. It talks about who is a terrorist and it talks about who, who, who is a domestic terrorist. 
Ladies and gentlemen, according to this statute, white males are the terrorists. This is a statute right here. And I, if I, I'm glad. And let me read this to you a little bit. I want to quote you the number rather than the actual statute. But I'm going to quote to you the state, the state statute number. And this comes under hate crime. This is state statute RSMO 590.650. That's state statute 590.650. This classifies white Caucasians as terrorists. So we're the ones under the gun. This is not my opinion. I'm going to pass it around. You can read it. This is what our legislators done to us. If you're a white male between 18 to 65, somebody's watching you. And I'm not going to get too extreme on this. I'm just telling you the way that it is. So what are we going to leave for her? If we don't fight this right now, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because these things are coming in place. Another way that they can implement the Strong Cities Network is through federal grants. If you take federal grants from, a, from the federal government, there are strings attached to that. Now very often when you make your first grant, they'll have you sign some forms saying that you will adhere to this and that in order for you to re receive the funds. And the second time that you make a federal grant request, you don't have to sign that. So some officers and departments, well, we're not under that now. That's because they signed the first one. And that takes care of all the subsequent requests for federal aid. So the two ways that this could come in is through chaos, which I think is going to happen, or federal grants because we don't want to fund our local departments for whatever reason, but we've got money to go to football games, we've got money to go to baseball games, but we won't fund those things that really mean something to us. Police departments have people working there, and they're the lowest paid in the community nine times out of 10. That's not the way it should be. They should make the average wage of the average earner in a county or city, but they don't. And then mayors and political bodies love policemen because that's control. They can control their opponents through election because there's a lot of political corruption and the police are often used to gather intel on opponents for the, for the mayor or whoever. So they want their department. So we've got wrong priorities in this country. And I'm telling you, that's why I'm running because when I'm elected sheriff of Franklin County, this is not going to happen. I will not allow the Strong Cities Network to take over this county. That, I give you my word on. At this time, I'm just going to open it for if there's any questions. If anybody's got anything they want to ask me, I'll be more than glad to entertain questions. Yes, sir. How did they do Denver, Baltimore, and the others you named? They went at Baltimore, as you know, had riots. Yeah. New Orleans had Hurricane Katrina, and so forth and so forth. And the chief of police and the, and the political body of Denver wanted it. They just opened it up because Denver Airport out there has a massive amount of of federal government, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking? Federal government's being shifted to the Denver area. They've had massive federal agencies move to the Denver area, so that's how they got them. Is through that. When you accept federal money, there, there's that carrot. But there's been numerous agencies shift from the uh, from the Washington D.C. area out to the Denver. I think the CIA is now in Denver. And I think the IRS is now in Utah. So they have shifted a lot of their resources out there. And when the federal government shifts resources, that's how they get involved in this. That's one way. And the other way, like I say, is riots, civil unrest. That's when they make their moves normally. Now, I, I don't know exactly how Denver came about, but I know they've got a lot of federal resources out there now. And I suspect that's, that's what happened. Any other questions? There's no question of that that I won't try to entertain it. If I've got the answer, I'll give it to you. If not, I won't.